Okay, so during the break, I just went ahead and reissued that uh, addition or, or adding the host of .20 uh, because it had just temporarily lost connectivity for, uh, for some reason. It didn't respond to a number of pings for a moment, and then it came back online. So I'll check that box out in a little while. But for the mo meantime, or in the meantime, I've gone ahead and just done the exact same thing, did a right click, add host. And I can click now on manage hosts, or I can go over to the host tab, specifically the host tab from the perspective of this distributed virtual switch. So it created this distributed virtual switch under this folder in my data center. I can click on hosts, and I see that I now have .10 and .20. Dot 20 has an alert, so if I want, I can double click on this. This will take me over to inventory hosts and clusters and to the 20 uh, host, ESXi host, and I can go up and I can see the alert. I can double click on it and I can see that it's warning me that I've lost uplink redundancy, which is true. If I go back to configuration, for this host and I look at the networking itself and I see that it's lost redundancy for VM NIC 0. Now why dot 10 didn't tell me the same thing. Oh, because it doesn't look like it migrated that over. So it went ahead and added the vSphere distributed switch for dot 10, but for some reason it seemed it was unable to or unwilling to add the physical NICs and it tells us right here there's no physical adapters are connected to this vSphere distributed switch. But this tells me that the VEM module has been installed, or at least the, the VIB software has been installed into ESXi. Now, at this point, what we can do is we can go over and take a look at our switch, and we actually will note that we're not going to see anything yet. So we don't see those modules, the VEM module, show up yet. All we see is our virtual supervisor modules, our VSMs 1 and 2. And this is because we haven't moved any management VM kernel interface over to that uh, distributed virtual switch. Now, if this were layer 2 mode, if we were using layer 2 mode in the VSMs, under the SVS, so let's do show run pipe to begin SVS. SVS domain. If we were using SVS mode or server virtualization switch uh, layer two, and the control VLAN was the same VLAN as the uh, as the actual ESXi host, which is one. <clears throat> then we would see that, that the VEM modules would automatically be added. And we wouldn't even have to, we would not even have to move them over to control through the distributed virtual switch. However, and by the way, when this is in layer 3 mode, these uh, VLAN IDs are ignored. Okay, These VLAN IDs are used for layer 2 mode. So because it's in layer 3 mode, we're going to need to go ahead and move those over. Now, to begin with, I can go ahead and say on host 10, vSphere distributed switch, manage physical adapters, and notice that I have uh, properties for the entire DVS or distributed virtual switch, basically number of hosts that are maximum allowed. Ma manage physical adapters and manage virtual adapters. So the physical adapters will be the Ethernet port profile equivalent, and the virtual adapters will be the VE port profile equivalent. So we'll click Manage Physical Adapters, and I'm just going to minimize this unused or up or quarantine uplink, and I'm going to click to add a VNIC, and I'll add the second VNIC, and I want to remove it from vSwitch0 and connect it to the distributed virtual switch. And I'm going to add the redundant VNIC for each of these to each proper uplink port profile. And it's gone ahead and moved those. 
Now notice two of those show not only their, and we can expand these, not only do they show the actual VM NIC uh, uh, or, or the physical adapter from the port profile side, but as that adapter is plugged into this pictorial of the distributed virtual switch, we see that the uplink uh, for system uplink, VM NIC 1, is green and active. The uplink for VM NIC 3, for vMotion uplink, is green and active. But the uplink for VM NIC 5 is currently not active. And the reason for this is the system VLAN command. So we have system VLAN, or basically cut through access for a particular VLAN or VLANs. But in the case of VM guests, we don't have anyone on the V Ethernet side that is yet registered with this connection, with this uh, with that particular VLAN 110 for that VM guests. So that'll change once we add that. But we also notice that this has now gone into that alert state because it also now has network uplink redundancy has been lost. So if we go back, if we click on manage virtual adapters, we have the ability to move VM kernel over. So we can see VM kernel, we could migrate this or we can click add and then it will do a migration. But we don't want to do this just yet because there's one critical component that we're missing. So we're going to go ahead and go back to our Nexus 1000V and let's show run pipe to begin with port profile. And now we're going to create a port profile type V Ethernet. And we'll call this one, let's see, we're going to use this one for the VM kernel. We're also going to use one for 4093. We'll create one for each. So let's create this one called VM kernel management. And this will be VMware port group. We'll create a VMware port group. We will no shut it from the Nexus side. We will say that this is going to be a system VLAN of one. And we're going to set this as switch port mode access. Now we can set system VLAN. Well, actually, we have to set the it has to match the access VLAN. So for we have to do switch port access VLAN one, then we can set the system VLAN. Order of operations is important here. And we're going to say state enabled. And we should see it created over here. It's reconfiguring the distributed virtual switch. If we go back out to inventory, networking, it's created that VM kernel uplink. Now that's not enough. There's one other important thing and we need to say uh, the command capability L3 control. So what this does is it says, uh, it actually warns us the profile is configured with capability L3 control also configure the corresponding VLAN as a system VLAN in this port profile and the uplink port profiles that are used to carry the VLAN to ensure no traffic loss. And that's a really nice reminder and very important. So it's now that we have the ability and, and what this command does is this command tells any traffic that comes into this interface to be encapsulated into UDP 4785 if it is a VEM heartbeat to be sent on, not all traffic, but if it is a VEM heartbeat that encapsulate it in UDP 4785 and send it on to its destination, and it knows the destination because the VEM module was already added to the distributed virtual switch. So it knows that the destination should be the management IP address
which is management zero. So it knows to send it to this IP address over that UDP encapsulation because the host was already added to the DVS and it's going to encapsulate that traffic. So let's just take a look at it to be sure. And first of all, we've got our system uplink with the system VLAN is one, no shut, state enabled VM port group, everything's good there. And then I've got my VE VM kernel capability L3, VMware port group, switch port mode access, access VLAN one, no shut, system VLAN one, and state enabled. Now we can go ahead and do a few other things. We can go ahead and create um, some port profiles for that we're going to be using for our, let's say, VSM management. And this will be a Forty ninety three, no shut system VLAN. Forty ninety three state enabled. We see that one added. We're also going to add one for V Motion. And that's one fifteen VLAN. No shut, system VLAN, 115, state enabled. And we can go ahead and add the port profile for V Ethernet type for our VM guests. And maybe we'll call this one VM guest 110. We'll be able to differentiate it anyhow, uh, but maybe we'll just go ahead and say that. So VMware port group, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 110 no shut, and state enabled. And let's just do a copy run start. We see all these added. For our guest, our VMware kernel, our VMware motion kernel interface, and the VSM management on 4093. And we could always name these with the VLAN number as well, just in case we're in any way concerned. We can also click on summary. It will tell us a little bit of information about it. Uh, ports, virtual machines that are assigned. This is really going over information about the entire, uh, the entire virtual switch, distributed virtual switch. So let's go ahead and go back to inventory hosts and clusters. And at this point, this is the scary moment when we possibly lose connectivity to our ESXi host. And of course, we would have done this when we had our ESXi hosts in in some form of, uh, you know, maintenance mode, or I guess not necessarily maintenance mode from the ESXi perspective, but uh, a maintenance window, I guess I should say. And, you know, we're in a lab or we're in a actual production environment maintenance window. We don't have live VMs on our machine. So that if we do lose connectivity, we can always go back to the actual console of that ESXi or ESX host and deal with trying to recover from there. And it's really not that hard to recover from the actual console, which we have over KVM thanks to the UCS. Okay, so now we're on the host of dot 10. We've clicked on vSphere distributed switch and we're going to go ahead and click on manage virtual adapters. And we're going to choose to add and to migrate an existing virtual adapter. And I'm just going to do one at a time. So I'm only going to move the management network from vSwitch to an uplink port, which is the VM kernel. Okay, so this is gonna put it on this interface. System VLAN one should be cut through to system VLAN one. We should maintain connectivity. And let's turn on term on, show module. If we don't have any modules. This should add this module. And it's in progress.
There we go. Just took a little bit of time. We see the interface is coming up. And uh, we before that, we saw a Vem manager detect. We saw that detected as module three. Now we're actually going to uh, be sure that we see a particular host as a particular module. I talked about how that's a good idea. I didn't do that ahead of time. I will do that for dot 20. And it would naturally, uh, this naturally, the uh, first host that came online became dot three. The next one would become dot four, or sorry, vem module four. I'm just going to go ahead and choose vem module five uh, before I add that one, just to ensure that, uh, you know, our command is working properly. But we see that module three has come online. And as soon as that uh, happened, we saw interface VETH is attached to VMK0 on port one of module three with a distributed virtual port ID of 160. And then we saw interface 32, 34, and 36. Now 31 would be VMNIC0, which we haven't migrated over yet. VMNIC1 is VE32, 3 because we're on VEM module 3, and 2 because it's the second port. And then we had uh, our, so we basically took our second, fourth, and sixth NIC and move those over. And so that's why they attached as they did. Okay, we see VE1 is up in mode access. Uh, we see these ports come online. This has got 20 gigabits of speed. We see everything changing to up. So let's do a show module. And we see our virtual ethernet module is here. In fact, we can see the release of VMware, ESXi, and the IP address of the server name as well as the server UUID. And this UUID is what we'll use to distinguish this VEM module. So notice this host VMware ID, whenever this blade gets disassociated or whenever this host gets disassociated, and that's after six lost heartbeats, then and there's a heartbeat every second. So after six seconds, this VEM module would remove itself. Uh, but if we keep this command in here and do a copy run start, then this command is in here and it really doesn't matter even if the virtual supervisor module got restarted or anything like that. Uh, when it came back online, it would always be the same VEM module. And so my ports would stay the same. So show interface brief. I can see my ports as uh, my physical uplinks as 3, 2, 4, and 6. My VETH, I only have one up right now. So if I show run, I can see after my port profiles, I can see my VETH port. I can see that it's inherited the port profile that I told it to or that the vSphere ad, uh, administrator told it to be a part of. And it even tells me the description is VMware kernel, specifically VMK0. Okay, so, and then I've got my physical interfaces. So let's go ahead and do show run, or just show run, type two section. I don't think I can do section. You can't do section in Nexus 1000V. Uh, so let's just do it to begin to vem three. And I'm gonna go ahead and add vem five just to differentiate so that it doesn't become vem4, which it would by default. And we'll say host VMware ID, and we need to get the UUID of dot 20. So let's go grab the UUID of dot 20. And one of the ways that I know we can get this very quickly is let's go ahead and go to configuration for this host, security profile, properties, ESXi shell. Let's start it and tell it to start with the host as well. And then let's also come down and start SSH server. And now I should be able to actually SSH from the Nexus 1000V 
and I can run the command, I believe it's esxcfg-info-u, and I grab the UUID. Now this is important. If I want to say vem slot 5, and then vm host, I can paste this in, but this is actually not going to work. It'll still show up as vem4, even though it's the proper ID. And the reason is, Nexus 1000V is case sensitive, or NXOS is case sensitive, and so it's going to register with lowercase letters rather than uppercase letters. So I need to go change all of my hexadecimal letters to lowercase, and let's just make sure I didn't miss any letters in here. I don't believe I did. We'll certainly find out if I did, because if it shows up as vem4 instead of 5, then I won't have put it in there. And again, the reason that you might do this is so that as you have, you know, maybe you're a LAN administrator and you're programming the Nexus 1000V, but then you have a VMware server admin who is migrating over the various uh, ESX modules over to the, uh, to the distributed virtual switch of the N1KV. And you want to make sure that certain ESXi hosts show up as certain VEM modules or virtual Ethernet blades. Okay, so this should work. In fact, these should be the same prefixes, so I could have probably just copied that and changed it to Delta Foxtrot instead of Foxtrot Foxtrot, but that should work. So let's go ahead and migrate this over. Oops, wrong window. So we'll go over to dot 10 and networking. And we'll go to vSphere distributed switch, manage virtual adapters, add, migrate existing. Oh, we've already done that for 10, sorry, dot 20. Well, we can go ahead and migrate the uh, vMotion over as well. Sorry, I clicked on VMK0, and that's a way that we could, if we wanted to, migrate it back to the standard non-distributed switch. So we'll do add, migrate existing. We'll just go ahead and do vMotion. Of course, we have to select a port group for that. And it's going to be the vMotion port group. Since we're already here, we can go ahead and do that. It's in progress and completed. We'll migrate some guests over in the VSM in a moment. Let's go to dot 20. And let's say manage virtual adapters, add, migrate, next. And why not? Let's just do them both at the same time. We're feeling dangerous today. And again, this is one of those things where you just take a, a deep breath and you hope that everything is fine. But honestly, it's it just seems more scary than it really is. And sure enough, VEM module, if I can get this to scroll, there we go. VEM module, where is it? Five came online. And it came online as five, show module because we pre-specified that VEM host ID binding. Okay, so we've got this in here. The IP address will update presently or momentarily. We can see the server IP address. It's just the server name hasn't updated. Uh, so we've got full connectivity. So show interface brief. We now see that we have 5 slash 2. We haven't migrated the other interfaces over yet. We'll do that in a moment. Now we've already gone ahead and migrated VE2 over to 115. VE3 is going to be our secondary VM kernel for our .20 host, and VE4 is going to be our 115 uh, vMotion interface. So let's do show run. Okay, vMotion for VMK1.
and then our VM kernel and vmotion. And it tells us the MAC address of the tells us the MAC address of that uh, virtual interface. Okay, so let's go ahead and manage the physical adapters on dot twenty. And it clearly didn't move all of them over, so let's go ahead and add our vmotion uplink. and our VM guests uplink. And while we're at it, we've already got the, the scary part done. So why don't we just go ahead and move all of our network up uh, network links over. Four and five for vMotion, we'll do VM NIC two. And for our system uplink, we've already moved. Actually, I'm going to leave this one on here just for the moment. No, I'm going to go ahead and move this physical uplink over as well. This will momentarily disconnect the VSM2. So I'm going to have to re-add that because I'm taking away its only physical uplink adapter attached to its vSwitch. And the guest on the virtual side is still attached to the vSwitch. The standard non-distributed. So we should lose our second VSM module. And in fact, we see additional modules come online, but Heartbeats did stop to module two. So let's do show mod. And module two has been removed. So let's go ahead and change Now it also gave us some warnings in there. Let's actually go take a look at the warnings. It said that V that uh, ETH 5.1 and 5.2 are carrying the same VLANs. Ensure that channel is configured on the profile configuring carrying multiple VLANs on the same VEM and that no more than one channel on a VEM is carrying the same VLAN. Please ignore this message if any of these ports is configured as a local span destination. And it tells us the same thing for ports five, one and two, three and four, and five and six. It hasn't told us that about them module three yet because we haven't added any of the redundant NICs. So we're going to be configuring, uh, it tells us to, where does it say it? Ensure the channel is configured. Uh, to, 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 Oh, ensure that channel is configured on profile, carrying multiple ports. So we're going to do that here in just a moment. Okay, and it's just giving you some helpful information why the VSM isn't there. So let's go to edit settings. And let's say network adapter for control management and packet in that order is set to notice the ones with the parentheses behind them. The parentheses are the distributed virtual switch and the rest of the normally numbered or normally named ones are local non-distributed switches. And remember Nexus 1000 V isn't the only distributed virtual switch. So let's just choose uh, N1K VVSM. We want that to go to the VSM management, 4093. Hang on, I think that's what we had it on before. Yes, VSM management, sorry. So we'll change that, and that's in progress. And we see that module two was detected. It's back. It was removed temporarily, but it should come back online here in a moment. And it tells us that it will be rebooted. Where did it say that? Resetting the secondary soup. 
the secondary soup will be rebooted. So it's taking care of rebooting that module. So it will be back online momentarily. We've, we've regained connectivity. There it is. Secondary VSM, configuration right started. It's back online, it's powered up, but it's not in high availability standby yet. Neighbor update, auto copy. Getting the N1KV initially set up, especially if you've never worked with it before, can be a little kind of nerve wracking because you're hoping that everything comes back online in the proper way. It's not like a physical switch where if the supervisor doesn't come online, I connect a console cable to it and I go pull it out of the chassis and I inspect it for bent pins or anything like that. And then I, you know, slide it back into the chassis and now we're back in high availability standby. Uh, it's, it can be a little nerve wracking because you're working with all virtualized uh, information. But again, once you get it set up, you shouldn't, assuming you don't have any network connectivity issues, uh, you shouldn't lose any of this information. And all, uh, or you shouldn't see these kind of syslog messages. You shouldn't see modules be um, removed or installed from the virtual chassis. And actually, one other thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that even if both virtual supervisors go offline completely, let's just say I powered them down right now, whatever configuration has already been essentially pushed down to the VEM module, because this is a distributed virtual switch, that, though, that, that traffic will still keep forwarding. So even if both VSMs go offline, which is why we have two, of course, and hopefully you don't even have them in the same uh, physical chassis, the same physical server, of course, uh, the same ESX or ESXi host, or even the same uh, blade chassis for that man uh, matter, or you're just running the Nexus 1110 or 1010 if you have the older version uh, hardware platform and they're you know in separate racks or whatever to create that redundancy, separate grids. Uh, even if they did both go offline, your VEMs are still going to forward traffic. So that's one of the really nice things about the way that this DVS is built. Okay, so let's go ahead and we really, on this host, have no more physical adapters for our vSwitch. So let's go ahead and migrate our guest over. Currently guest uh, dot, let's just see, dot 201 should not be able to be pinged. 203 is on host 1, and it's still on a standard switch. 202 is still on host 1 with a standard switch. 201 should not be able to be pinged yet. So let's just do this with a dash T and we'll go ahead and migrate this. Oops. Over to our DVS, to our VM guest 110. And it should be able to be pinged here real quick. There we go. And we've got pinging capability. And while it's pinging, uh, let's go ahead and try to V-motion that over. So let's go ahead. Well, actually, let's not do that just yet. We're going to talk about, I don't want to get into any issues with uh, port channels or, sorry, with redundant uh, loops or anything. So let's just go ahead and take a look. Now, the Nexus 1000V does not run spanning tree protocol. So you are not supposed to have any redundant upstream links, or if you do, that's where uh, VPC host mode is utilized. So you're not supposed to have any redundant links in that sense. In fact, that was one of the prerequisites or recommendations, really a prerequisite that the installer mentioned uh, that we didn't read through the entire screen, but it told you from, and it gave you examples of upstream switches like a Catalyst 6500 or a Nexus uh, 5000 or 7000. But it basically said that you should have uh, spanning tree port type uh, edge trunk configured on your upstream switches because you don't want to be running spanning tree. Now, we already know that the UCS blade uh, fabric interconnects are not going to be running spanning tree anyhow. So we should have already had on our upstream switches uh, that particular mode, spanning tree port fast. Sorry, port fast would be the old iOS command. 
uh, Catalyst iOS. But for the NXOS would be spanning tree port type edge trunk. So it's an edge. We're not running spanning tree. Uh, we're filtering or not sending any BPDUs, uh, but it's a trunk. So there's going to be multiple VLANs there. Okay, so let's talk real briefly about that VPC host mode. 